The cylinder heads chosen for this project are actually a used pair of aluminum Champion GN1R heads. Besides getting a good price for them, owner Terry Dula likes the lighter weight of the aluminum construction compared to the stock cast iron heads. Plus, there's raised runners for better flow and the full race porting job. These heads also locate the valves closer to the center of the combustion chamber to reduce shrouding and improve airflow into and out of the combustion chambers. Since these heads obviously had to be freshened up after coming off another engine, cylinder head specialist Kevin Troutman took advantage of the opportunity to make a few modifications. These include new custom valve guides to accept intake valves with 7mm stems. The exhausts are slightly larger at 5 16 of an inch to make them better able to withstand the high heat from exhaust gases. Here you can see a comparison with the old valves that had the standard 11 seconds valve stems. This cuts 20 grams of weight off the intake valves and 7 off the exhausts. The new valves, by the way, are stainless steel pieces from Manly. They're 1 inch 900 thousandths for the intakes and 1 inch 600 thousandths for the exhaust. Valve angles were kept standard, but Kevin Troutman did install new hardened valve seat inserts for the heads before cutting the seats. After the heads are decked to make sure that the head gaskets will seal well, they're assembled with hardware from comp cams. The springs are part number 26918 and go in with an installed height of 1 inch 800 thousandths. On the seat, they rate out at 140 pounds and 340 pounds when the valves are fully opened. One of the cooler features of this engine build is the fabricated valve spring squirters designed to spray a cooling stream of motor oil onto each of the springs. Troutman began with a pair of valve cover spacers and welded a piece of quarter inch aluminum tubing through both and then he drilled 24 holes each 16 thousandths of an inch in diameter into the tubing. Engine builder Craig Hibden handled assembling the short block and here he double checks the piston volume in the block to make sure that the planned 8.5 to 1 compression is on the mark. Hibden is using ARP head studs and a set of Comatic multi-layer steel head gaskets to make sure there are no sealing issues when the turbo is working at full spin. He adds a thin layer of silicone above and below the ears of the gaskets to aid in sealing in these areas and then applies Molly lube to the threads on the studs before lowering the cylinder heads into place. Hibden soaked the comp cams hydraulic roller lifters in oil so that they will be fully lubricated before installing them in the block. Then he begins setting up the rest of the valve train. Being full race heads, the GN1s are set up for shaft mount rockers. The first step is to install the pedestal which bolts directly to the cylinder heads. These rockers are from T&D and measure in with a 1.65 to 1 ratio. Once the pedestal is in place, Hibden installs lash caps on the intake valve stems to increase the surface area from the 7 mm stem size to 11 seconds of an inch. This will give the rockers more area to actuate the valve. Then the rocker height is checked with a set of 3 8 inch diameter push rods. With shaft mount rockers, the height is changed by adding or removing shims underneath the pedestal. And once that's fixed, lash is set with an adjuster on the push rod side of the rocker. One weakness of this block design is that there are only provisions for eight head bolts on each side. This may be fine on a low compression street engine, but for a large turbo application like we've got here, that's not going to be enough clamping load. To help hold the head to the block, Hibden adds a pair of external aluminum plates. They use these steel inserts in the head and then clamp between those inserts and two bosses on each side of the block to help provide just a little bit more resistance to keep the head from lifting off the block when the boost approaches maximum levels. Once everything is fitted up, Hibden finishes the valve train installation, including the valve cover spacers that will double as spring squirters. As you can see, the intake manifold has also been bolted into place. Next up will be the turbo, the engine management system, and the rest of the accessories.